Hi there, in this video, we'll learn how the three standard timers can be used inside Codesy software. After that, we'll start a simple project to use timers to control a belt conveyor. Before we get started with today's video, I just wanted to inform you about all the great content we have been releasing on the PLC Goods YouTube channel, which includes industrial automation PLC programming, HMI, and microcontroller based developments. My name is Syed Reza, and if you enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell, to receive the latest and the greatest content, I will be posting through the channel. Ok, let's start the video. Again, let's create a new project. Now, let me write a simple program. Assume a belt conveyor must be controlled by a normally open push button. As you know, based on the program, whenever this contact is activated or deactivated, immediately this output will be on or off. Well, a timer is a PLC instruction measuring the amount of time, elapsed following an event. Let's use an on delay timer between the contact and coil, to see how it can be added and used. Its instruction name is TON. As you can see, some parameters must be defined for the inserted timer. First, each timer needs a variable to work correctly. Although any name can be written here, I prefer to use the default name and then press the enter key on my keyboard. As you know, when a variable enters the program, Codesys opens this window to specify its properties. Note that, the selected data type of the new variable is TON. This type of data is used to store necessary information, appropriated for on delay timers. For example, what is the predefined time, that must enter at the second input. The time can be entered based on millisecond, second, minutes, hour and so on like these examples. Note that, we must use T plus hashtag before the desired time, to indicate the entered value is a time. On the other side, a variable must be specified to store and display elapsed time, since rising edge at the first input. Note that, its data type must be time. Alright, one on delay timer with these two variables, has been inserted between the contact and coil. Now, let's test the program to see its performance. As you can see, this variable whose data type is TON includes four parts, in accordance with the number of inputs and outputs of the inserted timer. Now, let's start simulation, and use the start contact to activate the coil. Later, I will connect them to these equipment inside factory IO. Well, when I press Ctrl plus F7 on my keyboard to change the contact state, the program will enable the output after 5 seconds. Note that, whenever I disable the start contact, either before or after 5 seconds, the timer will disabled immediately and the output will be off. Well, to see more details about timers, let's use the help window. Well, there are three types of timers. The on-delay timer has already been tested. 
This diagram displays its performance. Whenever the timer is activated, it starts timing and after the predefined time, the timer will activate its output, and whenever the timer is deactivated, its output will be deactivated immediately. The second standard timer is the off-delay timer or just TOF. It is called an off-delay timer because its output is turned off after a delay. This diagram displays how it works. Whenever the timer is activated, its output will be activated immediately, and whenever the timer is deactivated, its output will be deactivated after a delay. The final one of the three standard timers is called, the pulse timer or TP. It is a very useful timer function to generate a pulse of a specific length. When its first input changes from 0 to 1, in other word receives a rising edge, it will generate the pulse. Note that, it won't sensitive to new rising edges, when it's in timing mode. Now, let's test the off delay and pulse timers. First, from the right list, let me add an off delay timer. As you see, like the on delay timer, the inserted off delay timer needs a variable to work correctly. Note that, its data type is TOF. Similarly, let me use a pulse timer inside the program. Well, there isn't any pulse timer besides on and off delay timers. So, let me go to the general list and add a general box. Then I can select the pulse timer by writing TP. Note that, this timer uses another data type, TP, to store its inputs and outputs state. Now, let's test the program. Ok, this window says, the application changed since last download. It means the current program is different from the previous one, which has been downloaded before. The window is asking us, what do we want to do? The first choice is login with online change. That means, if the PLC is in running mode, its program will be updated quickly without stopping the PLC. So, at the next cycle, the new program will be executed. The second choice is login with download, meaning that the PLC will be put in stop mode, and all the variables will be reinitialized. Also, we can log in without any change. This is not very useful, because the program that we will be seeing, will not be the one that is currently executing on the PLC. So, let's log in with download. Note that, the last checkbox is really important. Because if we tick this box, we will also overwrite the boot project. It's the project that is will be run at the start at the power on of the PLC. Often, we will need to enable this box. Let's continue. Now, if I enable this contact, because of the on delay timer, the belt conveyor will be on after 5 seconds, and because of the pulse timer, the warning light will be on just for 15 seconds. Now, if I disable the start contact, because of the off delay timer, the first output will be off after 10 seconds.
All right, these three standard timers have been tested. Now, let me define a simple project. When the start push button is pressed, my program will turn on the alarm siren and warning light. The alarm siren will be on just for 5 seconds. After that, the emitter and belt conveyor must be turned on to move boxes. Well, when the stop push button is pressed, immediately the emitter will be off, and the belt conveyor remains on for 10 seconds, to move all boxes. After that, my program will turn off the belt conveyor and warning light. Note that, if the emergency button is pressed, the start push button won't work. Finally, the emergency button can be used to stop the belt conveyor immediately. First, try to write an appropriate program for this simple project. Then, you can continue the video, to see how I did this project. This program was explained. It can be used to turn on the belt conveyor with a delay, but it's not practical. Because the operator needs to press and hold the push button. So, let me write a program that uses these two push buttons, to save start stop requests on my PLC. Ok, this program uses a set coil to hold start requests on this variable, receiving from the start push button. Similarly, the stop push button with a reset coil can be used, to clear the start request. Well. If you simulate this program, it will work correctly, but if you connect it to the push buttons, it won't work, because the stop push button is normally close. Therefore, this contact will be activated and be close. In consequence, the reset coil will be activated and reset the start request in normal conditions. To solve this problem, I need to use a normally close contact instead of a normally open inside my program. Note that. The reset coil has been used after the set coil. So, if both push buttons are pressed, although the first line will store the start request, but the second line will clear it. In consequence, we'll not have any start request. Let's continue. Usually, before starting any device, some safety conditions must be checked. For example, if the stop push button is pressed, the start command mustn't work. Likewise, if the emergency button is pressed because of some emergency conditions. Note that, like the stop push button, the emergency button is normally close to. So, although I've used two normally open contacts inside my program, they will be activated in normal conditions, and I'll only need to press the start push button, to save my start request on this variable. To simulate the program, it's better to change the initial value of the emergency variable, to 1 or true. Likewise, let me initialize the stop PB variable to 1. As you see, the end logic can be used to check all necessary conditions before starting a device. Inside the second network, I can use parallel contacts, to stop devices based on different conditions. In this project, the emergency button can clear the start request too. Alright, in the next video, I'll use the three standard timers to complete and test the current project. Before that, 
try to do this project by yourself. I'll see you soon in the next video. Thanks for watching my content, if you have any question on this topic make sure you leave them in the comment section below, and if you can spend a few seconds of your time liking as well as sharing this video, if you enjoyed it, that will mean a lot to me. If you have any suggestions for the channel such as what kind of hardware or software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that in the comment section. See you next time. Bye bye.